Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next video. We're now gonna talk about the total revenue test. And the total revenue test is related to the price elasticity of demand that we've covered in the previous couple of videos. So think about it like a continuation of the price elasticity of demand. And just to do a quick review on elasticity of demand, we went over how the price elasticity of demand coefficient is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. And we did a couple of examples showing how to calculate that. And then depending on the value of this coefficient, we categorize that good or service as either being elastic, if that coefficient is greater than one, as unitary or unit elastic, if it's equal to one, or inelastic, if it is less than one. And so, what the total revenue test is going to be, it's actually going to be another way to figure out whether a good or service is elastic, unitary, or inelastic. And I'm going to go over a couple of examples, but before doing the examples, I'm actually going to try to explain to you intuitively how this all works, how we can look at the total revenue from a producer's perspective to see which one of these categories a good or service falls into. Now, total revenue, just in general, it's equal to what? It's equal to the price of a good or service times the quantity sold. Okay, so this is from a producer's perspective. And now, this is where stuff can get a little bit confusing sometimes because we're talking about the price elasticity of demand still, which demand is from a consumer's perspective, but now we're bringing in a producer perspective. So that's where students can get a little bit confused sometimes, but I'm gonna do my best to explain what's happening here. Now, even though this is from a producer's perspective, notice that this quantity sold here, it's actually the quantity demanded. It's not the quantity supplied because the amount that is sold in the market by the producer is how much of that quantity consumers want to buy, which is the quantity demanded. It's not how much is produced, right, which is the quantity supplied because a producer can produce maybe 100 units of something and maybe only sell 50, right? So that total revenue is based on how much they sold that 50 and that's the quantity demanded how much consumers are willing to buy and so even though we're looking at total revenue from a producer's perspective we're still using quantity demanded which is what consumers want to buy so that's where the connection sort of comes in here so total revenue is basically the price of a good or service times the quantity demanded and we can get both of those numbers on any point on that demand curve. And so what we're gonna be looking at is what happens to that total revenue? What's the change in total revenue? If the price decreases, okay, and what's the change in total revenue if the price increases. And depending what's happening with that total revenue, we can then know if a good or service is elastic, unitary, or inelastic. And we're gonna be explaining it through this formula. So let's say that a price decreases of a good, and let's say that the good is elastic. So remember, if a good is elastic, this coefficient is greater than one, which means the percentage change in quantity demanded is gonna be greater than that percentage change in price, okay, in order for that coefficient to be greater than one. So if a good is elastic, and let's say that the price decreases. So let's represent a decrease in price with this arrow here. Well, we know that from the law of demand, as the price decreases, that quantity demanded is gonna increase. The question is, how much does it increase relative to this decrease in price? 
And if a good is elastic, that percentage change in quantity demand is going to be greater than that percentage change in price. So we would actually represent this with a bigger arrow. So notice that this arrow here is bigger than this one. And so what I'm doing there is to show you that when the price decreases the, by a certain percentage, that quantity demanded is going to increase by a larger percentage. And so what's going to be the effect, the total effect on total revenue? Well, the price is decreasing. So if we're just looking at the price portion, the total revenue is going to go down. However, the quantity demanded is going to increase and it's going to increase by a larger amount. So what's going to happen is this portion, this increase is going to be greater than this decrease. This portion is going to overtake this portion. And so if you net out these two arrows, what you would end up with is an up arrow for the total revenue. Okay, hopefully that made sense. And again, we're going to do examples. I'm going to show you how this actually works with numbers, but just kind of want to go through diff the uh, different cases first before we get into those examples. So the price went down by this much, but the quantity demanded went up by this much. This is in percentages. So the net effect on total revenue is that it's going to increase. in that specific situation. And so if you get a question that is just showing you the revenue, so they say the price of the good decrease and the total revenue increase, then right away you'll know that that good is elastic. That could be a multiple choice question, for example. But again, I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of different examples dealing with the total revenue test. Right, so in this specific example for an elastic good, if the price decreases, the total revenue to the producer is going to increase still. Even though that price went down, that quantity demanded is going up by a larger amount, by a larger percentage. Now let's look at the other case for an elastic good. Let's say the price increase. Then what's going to happen to that total revenue? And I'm actually going to show it. Uh, I'm going to show that down here. So I'm going to write total revenue equals price times quantity demanded. I'm going to put quantity demanded there. So now what's happening is the price is increasing. However, this is still an elastic good. So that coefficient is greater than one. So that percentage change in quantity demanded is still going to be greater than that percentage change in price even though now we're reversing the order. So the price goes up by a certain percentage, but that quantity demanded is going to go down by a larger percentage. And so what would happen if you net out these two arrows here, that means the total revenue is going to go down. Because even though the price is increasing, so just looking at that portion, let's ignore the quantity demanded. Let's keep it constant. If the price is increasing and nothing else changes, then the total revenue to the producer is going to increase. But if we start mixing in this quantity demanded, the change in quantity uh, demanded, depending on the law of demand, that's going to go down respectively. And it's going to go down by a larger amount than this is going up. And so what happens in this case for an elastic good is that total revenue is going to decrease. Okay, so that's why I broke it down into these two specific columns here because that change in total revenue actually depends on whether the price is decreasing or the price is increasing. The coefficient doesn't depend on that. When we were calculating stuff before, I mentioned in the previous videos that it doesn't matter if the price, if we're going to this point, to this point, or from this point to this point, that coefficient is going to be the same. And we showed that using the midpoint, using the absolute value. But when we're looking at the total revenue, it does, when we're looking at the total revenue test, it does depend on whether we are going from this point to this point or from this point to that point. That uh, distinction does matter in this case. So we need two separate columns, two separate cases for that price either decreasing or increasing. 
right? So those are the two cases that happen with a total revenue for an elastic good. Now, what if the good is unitary, meaning the coefficient's equal to one, and so that percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to that percentage change in price? Well, there's not gonna be any change in total revenue because notice if the price goes up, the quantity demanded is gonna go down, but by that same percentage. And so those two arrows are just gonna net out to zero, and so there's not gonna be any change in total revenue for both of these cases. Let me kind of maybe split these up. Right, so whether the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is decreasing, or the price is decreasing and then that quantity demanded is increasing, right? Both of those are just gonna net out to zero. There's not gonna be any change in total revenue if that uh, good or service is classified as unitary. So if you get a question, they don't tell you anything about the quantity demanded or the price, but they say that with a change in price, there was no change in total revenue then you know that that good or service is unitary. Now, let's say that we're dealing with an inelastic good or service. So let's go through these two cases. So let's say that the price is gonna decrease. So let's say the price decreases by this amount. What's gonna to happen to the quantity demanded? Well, we know it's going to increase for sure because of that law of demand. The question is how much is it going to increase compared to that price decrease? Well, if the good is inelastic, it means that this percentage change in quantity demanded is gonna be less than the percentage change in price because that coefficient is less than one. So this percentage change in price is gonna be greater than that percentage change in quantity demanded. So if this is this big of an arrow going down for price, then the quantity demanded, it might be like that, an arrow like that relatively, right? That percentage change in quantity demanded is less than that percentage change in price. If you net out these two arrows, you're gonna end up getting a total revenue decrease. So in this case, there's going to be a total revenue decrease. And then vice versa, as you guessed it, if that price increases by this amount, quantity demanded is going to decrease, but by a lesser amount, by a lesser percentage, if the good is inelastic. So from here, if you net out these two arrows, you'd end up getting that total revenue increase. So the total revenue here is going to increase. And that's pretty much it. Those are the different cases, depending on the elasticity of a good or service for the total revenue. That is the total revenue test. And hopefully these arrows and stuff, it helped you intuitively understand why these cases are happening.